Chapter 10, Introduction to Inheritance, Part 3. Accessing superclass methods. To use overridden superclass methods within a subclass, you use the keyword super to access that method. So super dot and then the name of the method. Just the same way we've used this to refer to the current object, super refers to the current superclass. So for example, if we have a class called preferred customer, extends customer, we add a discount rate, we've got our constructor. Notice the constructor for preferred customer has a three has three arguments, so three parameters, ID, val, and rate. The first thing it does inside that constructor is call super ID and val, so it's passing those two arguments to the superclass constructor. And the first line of that constructor must be a call to the superclass. And then it adds discount rate equals rate. So anything that's added in the in these subclass follows the call to the superclass. And then let's look in display, public void display super.display. The first thing we do in that method is we call the display method defined inside the superclass and that runs and then we can add our extra discount rate is and then the discount rate. Inside methods other than the superclass method, the call to um, super.display for example, that doesn't need to be the first thing that happens inside that method. However, if we are talking about constructors, the call to super must be the first line of our constructor. So we just use the keyword super to refer to the super class. It's very much like the keyword this, um, except that this refers to the current object, and so whatever's inside the subclass, and super refers to the super class. When a parent class contains a method that is not overridden, the child can use the method name with super or with this because they refer to the same thing or by itself. Within a student class, we use the keyword private to precede the data fields to make it private, and the keyword public precedes each method. This example is in, is in your book. As I've mentioned, 99% of the time, data fields or instance fields or um, um, uh, what did I call it? Instance properties, um, uh, instance values, excuse me, I just hit a dead cell in my brain. Private applies to data. Public applies to methods. And that holds true most of the time. I keep saying 99% of the time. There's nothing magic about that 99%. It's just most of the time. And this implements the concept of information hiding, keeping the data private inside the object so you must use access methods to be able to access it. And here's an example of information hiding. We've got our ID num and our GPA. Those are private and we use our get and our set methods to access them inside the student class. When a class serves as a superclass and a subclass inherits all the data and methods of the superclass except private members. We talked about this earlier that private members are not accessible to the subclass except through the superclass, uh, excuse me, through the uh, public interface of the superclass. So private stays private inside a class. And sometimes we want to have a special category of private that means, yeah, this really is private, but it can be accessible from uh, any subclasses. And that's known as protected. That keyword protected um, is an intermediate level of security between public and private. So it can only be accessed inside the class but it's treating the subclass as being inside the class as well. So if something is set up as, as protected, it's accessible only inside the superclass or inside the subclass, but not from objects of either of those classes. Methods you can't override. You can't override static methods. Remember that static means it exists when no objects of the class exist. So if you think about that for a little bit, you'll realize that overriding static methods doesn't make any sense. We, we couldn't do it. We can't override final methods because what does final mean? Final means you can't change this. You can't touch this. If we allow overriding of final methods, that means they can be modified. They can be uh, touched later. We don't want to do that. So we cannot override final methods. And we can't override methods inside final classes. We haven't used final classes in this course, but just so you know, 
If a class is declared as final, that means it's constant. It's not going to change. And so we're not allowed to override methods within final classes.